Shannon's sister Tiffany has been keeping to herself ever since she turned 11. Whoa, she's 11 years old? Why doesn't she join the Babysitter's Club like Mallory and Jesse? Argo Funk Book Review, Argo Funk Book Review. This book was written by Nola Thacker. Hooray! We're finally getting a Shannon book! It's not part of the main series, but it's better than nothing. Life is not good at the Kilbourne house. Maria is always gone at swimming practice while Tiffany hides in her garden. Dad is always leaving to work or play golf, and Mom is just weird. Mom tries to pressure Shannon into taking a walk with her, and then Mom picks a fight because Shannon isn't wearing a jacket. She's wearing a sweater, not a jacket! Put on your jacket, Shannon! Mom! I'm not a little kid anymore! At breakfast, Mom is surprised to learn that Maria has swim practice today, and Shannon has a BSC meeting. Um, the BSC has been meeting regularly for years, Mom. How do you not know when they meet? And how do your kids get to practice if you don't know when practice is? Shannon's middle school is set up like a college, as opposed to the normal middle school in this town, which is set up like a prison. Shannon's favorite subject is French. She's excited because her class is taking a one-week trip to Paris. Ooh la la! You have to get a good grade in order to go on the trip, so Shannon studies constantly. She doesn't want anything to ruin her Paris vacation. That afternoon, Mom is surprised to hear Shannon's going to a babysitter's club meeting today. Mom, I told you about the meeting this morning. Weren't you paying attention? Shannon recaps the entire club, and I love that she talks about Christy last. Usually the recap chapter puts Christy first and Shannon last, but no, Shannon puts Christy last, even though Christy is the first BSC member to appear in the book. <laughs> it's Shannon's revenge against Christy. Ha 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 ha! How do you like being last in the recap, Christy? I bet this is why Shannon never got a second book. Nobody disrespects Christy like that and gets away with it. When Dad comes home, he's just as clueless as Mom is. He has no idea Maria can swim, or that Tiffany has a garden in their house. Has he not looked in his own backyard for the past 12 months? Mom buys matching outfits for her and Shannon. Ooh, how embarrassing. She scolds Shannon for not eating salad, or for folding the newspaper incorrectly. <laughs> Shannon's sisters complain. Mom is also treating them like little kids. It's driving them crazy. Mom's driving everybody crazy, except for Dad, and that's only because he's not around. Dad cancels a date with Mom for no reason, and yeah, that's not going to make things better. In the subplot, Chrissy wants to do something special for Mother's Day. The babysitters decide to have a gift-a-thon. It's basically a giant arts and crafts fair where the kids can make a number of gifts for their mothers... Oh, and they're going to have a kids versus mom softball game. Guess whose idea that was? Mom interrupts here. She calls Shannon Shanny in front of all of her friends, which is super embarrassing. And now the BSE is never going to stop teasing her about that stupid nickname. Sorry, Shanny. But the absolute worst thing in the world happens. Mom volunteers to be a chaperone for the Paris trip. Oh no! Now Shannon's dream vacation is ruined! <laughs> she complains about it to her friends. I'd mentioned that my mom was going to chaperone. Bummer, said Gree, but at least your mom's not some weird or something. But she's my mom, I cried. The gift-a-thon is kind of boring. They make menus and cards and Jackie makes a mess. Shannon and her sisters wake up early on Mother's Day to give mom presents. As for dad... He got up even earlier so he could go golfing. Wow, missing Mother's Day, Dad. That's really awful. Mom tries to get Shannon to wear their matching outfits, but it's such an ugly dress. Shannon lies and pretends she doesn't have it anymore. Mom goes snooping through Shannon's closet to find the dress, and she accuses Shannon of lying to her. Talk about obsessive, Mom. So Mom's angry at Shannon, and Mom gets even angrier when Dad shows up with a happy birthday card. Yes, he got the wrong card. Mom correctly guesses Dad has a pile of cards in his office as an emergency backup for when he forgets special occasions. I can't tell if Dad is a genius or a jerk. No, wait, no, no, he's a jerk. If he was a genius, he would have blank cards as backups. That's the smart thing to do. So, Mother's Day is ruined. Mom continues to be a pain. 
and Shannon is forced to take extreme measures. She purposely flunks her final exam in France. That way, she won't go on the Paris trip with Mom. Mom punishes Shannon for failing a class by putting her in charge of the house for a week. That way, Shannon will learn how difficult it is to be Mom. But honestly, it's not so bad. Dad and the housekeeper are there every day, so it's not like there's a whole lot she has to do to keep the house running. Mom leaves behind a list of chores, but we only see Shannon do one of them. She orders groceries from the store, but the delivery person is super late, as in he delivers the morning's groceries after dinner. And it's not even the right delivery guy. This isn't the grocery guy. It's the dog food delivery guy. The Kilborns have a personal delivery guy just for dog food? How crazy rich are they? Well, the delivery guy spills the dog food on the ground. While Shannon picks it up, her sisters dress the dog in human clothes. Yeah, that makes for a cute cover. But what happened to the groceries? Did they ever get delivered? I really want to know now. Instead, we get a two-chapter softball game with the moms, which, admittedly, was a lot of fun to read. At the end of the week, Shannon does extra work, like meal planning, because she's bored and she wants to feel useful. Shannon wonders what her sisters are up to, and she suddenly realizes, Whoa! I'm turning into Mom! Mom bothers her children all the time because she's super bored without a job or housework to do. She treats them like babies because she wants to feel useful by helping them. So the moral of the story is that being a stay-at-home parent is awful and nobody has any idea what we do all day long besides obsess over chores and watch soap operas. Thank you for feeding into the stereotype that my life is worthless, book. I really appreciate your contribution. Shannon tells Dad she understands why Mom is so lonely lately. Dad feels guilty and he cancels a business trip so he can be there at Mom's homecoming party. They're not a happy family yet, but at least they're happier. The tension is gone. And Mom seems better. She has mom friends, thanks to the trip, and she's thinking about getting a job. Because obviously working a job is the most important thing a person can do. That is what brings meaning and fulfillment to your life. Yeah, forget about having a family and children. They're stupid. Mindless office jobs are where it's at. The end. Postbook follow-up. I like this book. Shannon was an interesting narrator. I was expecting her to sound and act like Stacy with a beret, but no, she sounds different from the other babysitters. She has a larger vocabulary and peppers her narration with French phrases, and sometimes she's introspective. I also liked how the book doesn't fully resolve the issues with Shannon's mom and family. Things are still kind of bad for them, and I think the book got away with this half-ending because Shannon's not a main character in the series. If this had been Stacy or Dawn, she would have worked things out with her mom, and we'd get a nice, happy ending, with tie, which ties everything together with a bow on top. Um, unless they were setting up for a later book, this one feels like it could have a sequel. While I enjoyed the book overall, the premise doesn't work. Shannon's mom is mildly annoying, at worst. She's not so bad you need to flunk a class to cancel a trip to Paris. Shannon's dad was clearly a worse person, but Shannon takes no issue with him. And because Mom is gone for the final third of the book, it's really hard to resolve the storyline about her. That's probably why the softball game was two chapters long. The premise of the ending is that stay-at-home parents have nothing to do, so the subplot had to fill up the empty spaces. Oh, and in case you didn't pick up on that, I hated the premise that stay-at-home parents have nothing to do. It felt like a punch in the face to guys like me. Mrs. Kilborn, if you are bored, you should try reviewing a girl's book series from 20 years ago in your spare time. That's a good stay-at-home parent project. That's what I do. It will take you a few years to get through it. Uh, trust me. The editing in this book was not the greatest. The housekeeper's name changes from Briar to Brian, and Shannon doesn't mind being called Shanny until Chapter 3. She's totally cool with it when it happens in the first two chapters. Overall, it was interesting, mainly because we have a different narrator. The book wasn't interesting enough to merit a sequel. Uh, the subplot was kind of boring, and there are problems with the way the book was structured. I would improve the book by making Mom legitimately awful, or by giving Shannon one to two more storylines. I give Babysitter's Club readers request Shannon's story a four out of ten.